The history of Svealand is old. There are few who know about it, and they tell the story as a myth. Before Svealand. The elderly tell the story of an old war. It was such a war that reigned from the grey waves of the northern seas to the highest skies. Fought from the majestic mountains to peaceful plains, and it finally struck the whole Yggdrasil. It was the savage war between the Aesir and the Vanir. Without any apparent reason, ages long rivalry turned into the ages long war. The only thing we know is that the Aesir won the war, the Vanir being cursed and murdered by Odin and his pantheon as a result. There were some who resisted the carnage from both sides. Still, Odin's fury swallowed whole Svealand, drifting the land into a state of chaos. There was only one Vanir left, Freya. She has sacrificed her body and soul to the Aesir in order to end the war, and Aesir accepted her as an equal. Other Vanirs who survived have escaped to the east with the hope of being left alone. Svelin had been abandoned by gods and goddesses, but valor, bravery, and war never left the land. Many years have passed and many people lived and died. The new ages came in three. Ages of Svealand. Although the past is there and all is pain and sorrow and the memories of their ancestors, new ages come for Svealanders. There are three ages separated by vital events. The first age. Sages of old tell us that this was an age of gods, of myths, of courage and strength. During this era, the northern shores of the land began to freeze, which was the sign of the incoming Black Winter. At the beginning of this age, the tyrant Frost Jotun Odd ruled supreme over all living beings. As Black Winter spread, Odd gained power and folks started to run away from dark and cold. Yet, Odd was impaled by his own half Jotun brother, Voli who was gifted with a spear from Baldr. Deep within the North Mountains, Odd was imprisoned with powerful runes of ancient times and large chains, forged deep in the bowels of Svartalfheim. At the same time, the first kingdoms of Svelin started to emerge in the west and the east. However, fate was cruel and Baldr was killed by Odin's brother Loki. He fell to Helheim and the spear started to lose its power. His priests started to weaken as well, losing their beauty with their god's fall. The Second Age Both sages, older ones, and the spirits tell the stories of the Second Age. At the beginning of this age, the only authority of the land was Eastern Horn. In the west, on the other hand, there were rebellious groups, raiders, and crowded nomads. Slan reunited these groups into the beginning of a large civilization. At the same time, a high Seder council was assembled to prevent the Black Winter from gaining more power. They used their spirit magic to hold the winter in the north, unable to come south. In order to do that, Seders were settled down to the towers of Ymir's Lash Mountains. Their settling also created small villages and towns around the towers. The High Seder Council met every six months in a congregation, which was strictly forbidden for others to participate. In time, this consortium gave important decisions about the errands to the north. This era witnessed some major events, and the most nameable one is that ascension of the Bear King. He took the throne to rule the western lands widely. He became a great warrior king. At the time of him, the west gained power and started to challenge Eastern Horn. The two kingdoms shared their supremacy on Svealand, as lands of the Bear King and Kingdom of Eastern Horn. Kunings, however, had neither a kingdom nor a proper ruling system during this era. They preferred to live in their traditional nomadic ways following the footsteps of their satyr ancestors. The Awakening of Odd 
The weakening power of Baldur's spear could no longer contain the might of Odd, and the Frost Jotun finally awakened. The power of the Black Winter became even greater, and it kept getting stronger and stronger. High Seder Council could manage to contain both Odd and the Black Winter and keep their influence away from the south no longer. The Bear King started to think that they could stop the Black Winter only if they sacrificed the High Seder Council to the gods. So in this belief, he marched with his soldiers one night and murdered all of the High Seders. This was seen as blasphemy by the Eastern people. So began the Great Conflict which sued the seeds of hostility and discord between the Bear King and the Eastern Horn. A conflict that would continue for ages, settled in the minds of the present three kingdoms. The unknown thing is, the Council was aware of what was coming. Did they just let it happen? Turned a blind eye to their destruction? The Conflict like the two faces of the same coin, these two kingdoms shared a common heritage. However, they had different manners. Both wanted to expand their territory and abolish the other one. With the massacre of the High Seder Council, a war broke out. At the same time, the awakening of Ad turned the basic territorial conflicts to mass battles. Things got out of hand. Both sides had many casualties. Not differing between soldier and peasant, this skirmish and series of wars went on for some years. The towns and villages were ruined. Finally, Eastern Horn stood victorious over the Bear King. Yet, the throne of the Eastern Horn was nearly broken, and the Bear King was dead. Since then, Eastern Horn strengthens its castles, towers, and walls preparing their fortifications for a possible forthcoming, a much grimmer war. Within all the chaos, Odd was never fought head-on, and never he was completely defeated. Verger Verger were helping Baldur to make a spear that can bring down Odd. They forged the power of Baldur with Verg mastery. However, there was a condition. Verger demanded a gate to Svartalfheim with Ymir's lash. Baldur opened the gate so that the Verg could travel between the realms. Verger continued living under the mountains without anyone paying attention, until Baldur fell to Helheim. Consequently, the gate between Svartalfheim and Svelin collapsed. Many Verger were stuck in Svelin. After massacre of the High Seder Council, Spirits of Ymir's Lash outraged and took their revenge on Verger. Most Verger conceded to leave the mountains. They started to meet Svelanders as a result. Those who remained under the mountains continued digging deeper and deeper. Some say the Verger wanted to conquer Helheim and rescue Baldur and make him rebuild the gate. Others say they want to open a gate to Svartalfheim by themselves. The Third Age After the wars between East and West, and then between Svelanders and Odd, there was no authority left in the land. Some soldiers tried to take control, but everything was changed. Svelan got divided into three regions. Great winds of the north started to sweep the border of three kingdoms. Nonheim, Alsvarter, and green lights of the east. Nonheim Noinheim united under Clark, the King of the West. He was a strong soldier and followed the direction of the Bear King. He was a respected leader among people. After his death, his middle child Ingmar succeeded the throne. He also followed the path of the Bear King, yet he was also a visionary. He did not forget to build castles and walls just like Eastern Horn had. He thought that it necessary for survival against the raids on the borders of Alsvarter. On the other hand, Ingmar was a cool tyrant. He took others' wives and killed their children. He was enslaved by his cruelty. Finally, he was murdered by a man whose wife was stolen from him. Eilson, the Arisen. 
Ausvater. After the massacre and the war, Ausvater was gathered by Hazur. He was a young and strong warlord of the Eastern Horn. He ruled the region for a long time and was respected by his people. He thought that his brother Hanlan must take the throne. After his death, Hanlan succeeded the throne. Similar to his brother, he was a strong warrior and leader. He was loved by the soldiers and the elders. However, Gudrik, son of Hazur, could not accept his uncle. He traveled across the land attracting rural folk's sympathy and gathering his notorious strength. He took the name Moonbearer and revolted against his own uncle. He busted the courts and slaughtered many nobles. After a magnificent sword fight, Hanlin retreated and the region got divided into two sections, North Assembly and in Klestra. However, they are wary of going into a full-scale war as they fear becoming conquered by the neighboring kingdoms. Green Lights of the East In the eastern part of the land, Green Lights of the East was founded. Denil, a famous Thor Gothi, took the throne despite the harsh competition. He was well known and respected among people. After his sudden death, his biggest child, Sturjorn, succeeded the throne. However, his fate was similar to his father's. He died at a young age with a sudden death. Luckily, the throne was still succeeded by Denil family, his brother Orin. After that, the family became the ruler family. The throne has been occupied by the most well-known and talented members of the family, but some people think that the sudden deaths are the curse of the throne. Nowadays, it is ruled by a queen, Burio Daniel Dotir. She is a very resolved, as well known, following strongly Thor's teachings. You just listened to the history of Svealand, from the Norse mythology setting for Dungeons and Dragons 5e, created by Dream Realm Storytellers. For more information on Svealand, please visit www.dreamrealmstorytellers.com forward slash Svealand.